How's it going, you guys? So for this video, we're going to go over the problem single element in a sorted array. This is a problem asked at both Microsoft and Facebook. So the description says you are given a sorted array consisting of only integers where every element appears exactly twice, except for one element which appears exactly once. Find the single element that appears only once. And then it also notes that your solution should run in big O of log of n time and in constant space. So anytime you hear a constraint where it should be log of n time and we have sorted input, you should immediately think binary search. So in this first example, we have these, this integer array and we can see that the only single element is two. So we need to do a binary search over this input to find this single element. So let's jump over to the whiteboard and I'll show you guys how to solve it. So we have the integer array 1, 1, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 8, 8. And we need to find this number 2 since it is the single element. And so in a typical binary search, we have a left and right pointer. So we can say L, and this will be initialized to our uh, smallest index, so that's 0. And then R, our right pointer, will be at the rightmost index, which is 8 in this case. And then we need to compute a midpoint from our left and right pointer. So that would just be the left plus the right divided by 2. So our midpoint is going to be 0 plus 8 divided by 2, which is 4. And so that means we're first going to check this position right here with the number 3. And so the way we're going to check if the number that we're currently looking at is the single element is we need to check left and then we need to check right. And if both of these numbers on the left and right side are not equal to our midpoint, that means that we have our single element. So if we were to look at this number two here, we can see that to the left of us, we have a one and to the right of us, we have a three. Obviously, both of those numbers are not equal to two. So that would be how we determine that we found our single element. However, in this case, we're looking at index four, and we can see that to the left of us, we have a number three. So that means number three is not our single element. So since this is not our single element, we need to determine how we go left or right. And the way we're going to determine that is based on the size from our right pointer to our mid pointer. So what do I mean by that? Our right pointer is currently at index eight. So if we did 8 minus 4, that would mean that we have a total of four elements between that range, right? And that's inclusive of our right pointer. So that corresponds to these four elements. And since our numbers are always in pairs, if we have an even number of elements right side of our midpoint, then that would mean that we don't need to check the right side because if our single element was on the left or right side we would have an odd number of elements in that range so that is how we determine whether we need to move left or move right and the way we're going to check that if we did uh, this calculation 8 minus 4 and then we mod it by 2 since it's equal to 0 that means we are even and then if this were to equal a 1, then obviously we'd be odd, right? So if this came out to a 1, we'd be odd. And so that's how we determine whether we go left or right. Let's continue on in the problem. We are currently at index 4. And we can see that when we check to the right of us, 8 minus 4, that's 4. Mod 2, we have 0. And that's even. So what that means is we need to go left because our left side has the odd number of elements. And from here, now we need to check whether the element that we're currently looking at is equal to the left or right side. So since the three is equal to our left side, what that means is we need to bring our right pointer all the way over here, because we don't want to put our right pointer on this three, because we're already looking at a number three at our midpoint. So we need to skip this duplicate three. So our, our right pointer will be mid minus two. So right will be mid, which is four minus two. So now we're looking at two. Our left pointer stays the same. 
and then we recalculate our mid. So 0 plus 2 divided by 2, that would be 1, and that corresponds to this element here. And we can see that we have a number 1, and directly to the left of us we have our duplicate. So to determine whether we need to move left or right, we need to do right minus mid and compute the modulus by 2 to determine whether we have an even or odd number of elements. So if we did 2, which is our right pointer, minus 1, our mid pointer, that would equal 1. And then we do 1 mod 2, and that equals 1, so we have an odd number. So what that tells us is we need to move right because that will get us closer to our single element because we have an odd number of elements to the right, so that's where our single element is. So our left pointer will now need to move to mid plus 1. So our left is mid plus 1, which is 2. Our right pointer stays the same. And so now we are only looking at this number right here, which is our 2. And our exit condition is if L is greater than or equal to R. And since they are equal, that means we break out of this uh, while loop that we're going to write. And whatever our current left pointer is looking at will be our single element. So in this case, we're looking at index 2. So 2 is our single element for this example. So I figured before I jump into the code, it would be useful to see some pseudocode, just because I know this problem is complicated. So let's say we were looking at index 4. So we have a number 3. Our first check is if mid is equal to mid minus 1. So we're going to check before our midpoint, and we can see both of these numbers are 3s. So if that's true, then we check the calculation where we did right minus mid. So if we did our right, which would be 8, minus our mid, which is 4, so that would be 4 elements, and so that is even. So what that tells us is we need to move our right pointer to the left side. So our right would move right here. So our right pointer would move in front of this other duplicate 3. If that is not true, then we would move our left pointer to mid plus 1, so right here. And we know where to move our new pointers because we already checked that our duplicate was on the left side. So really the only difference is one pointer we're going to move mi uh, minus 2 and one pointer we're going to move plus 1. And so let's also check if mid is equal to mid plus 1. So let's say that the index we're looking at is looking at index 3. And so we would check forward, right? And both of these numbers are 3s. And so we're going to do the calculation to check if we have an even or odd number of elements. So let's say our right was index 8. And we did our midpoint, which is 3, 8 minus 3, that would be 5, right? And obviously, that is an odd number. But keep in mind, since our duplicate is on our right side, that calculation included this duplicate number. So technically, if we exclude this duplicate, we have an even number of elements on our right side. So what that tells us, is we need to move our pointer to the left. And then, likewise, if it's odd, then we just move our right pointer. So hopefully this was a bit more helpful. I know this problem is a bit confusing. But next, I'm going to jump into the code and show you guys how to implement it. So the first thing we can do is initialize our left and right pointers. Left will start at 0, and right will start at the very last index. And we're going to say while left is less than right, because if our left and right are equal, then we know we are at our current single element. So if we break out of this while loop, we can just return nums of left, because that will for sure be our single element. And so now we need to calculate our midpoint. We can say int mid 
is equal to left plus right minus left divided by two. This is the same thing as writing left plus right divided by two. But the reason why we're writing it this way is to handle for overflow. If our left and right are very large numbers, if we just did left plus right, that would break our code. So now we need to calculate if our numbers from right to the mid range are even or odd, because this will tell us whether we need to move our pointers left or right. So we can say Boolean is even. And we can say right minus mid mod 2. If that's if the modulus of 2 is equal to 0, then that means we have an even number of elements. And so now we're pretty much just going to write the same pseudocode that we just went over. So we're first going to check if the number we're currently looking at is equal to the previous element. So if nums of mid is equal to nums of mid minus 1. And then we need to check if it's even or odd. And so if we go back to the whiteboard, we can see that if it's even, we move right. Otherwise, we move left. So let's do that. So if it's even, our right pointer will go to mid minus 2. The reason why it's minus 2 is because remember, we're trying to ignore that duplicate element to the, to the left of us. So we need to move past both of that, those duplicates. And then if it's odd, then we can just say left is equal to mid plus 1. And then we'll do else if nums of mid is equal to nums of mid plus 1. So now we're checking the, the position forward. We'll say if is even, else, do something else. So if we go back to the whiteboard, we can see that if it's even, we're going to move left, otherwise move right. So it's kind of the opposite. So our left, think about if our element is on the right side. We need to move our left pointer mid plus 2 now. So we need to completely ignore that duplicate number directly to the right of us. So that's why we do plus 2. And then right is going to be equal to mid minus 1. And then finally, if both of these conditions are not true, that means that we have found our single element. So we can just return nums of mid. So let's just make sure that this code works now. And there we go. So the time complexity, as we already know, is log of n since we're doing a binary search. And then we are not initializing any extra space in this algorithm. So hopefully that was helpful for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.